So one of the easiest ways to get started automating an Active Directory using PowerShell is to create a user provisioning script. So I wanted to go over some of the steps on how to accomplish that. So the first thing you notice that I've got here from lines 12 to 15 are some of the variables that we already know. We don't need to ask for them, we just know them. And then on lines 18 and 19, we're prompting for the first and last name of our user. That's stuff we don't know. <laughs> and then on line 20, the username format that I'm using for this demonstration is just the first initial last name. So I'm building that from the inputted first and last name. And then of course lines 23 to 32, I've got a splat for my new AD user commandlet. And I'm doing all this from just the first and last name of the user. So if I run this section, it's going to ask me for a first name. And then we can validate that that user was created by using the get AD user commandlet. So there we go. We got a user. Great. Now we got a user provisioning script. Well, there's a lot more we could do. So for instance, we can add other attributes. So, so a really simple one is like the title. There's going to be a lot of unique titles out there, depending on your HR department. So we're not we don't we're not going to do much validation. We're just going to ask for the title and set it. So just like at prompting for the first or last name, and we can validate that it took using the get ad user commandlet. There we go. There's our title. But if you wanted to set an attribute that isn't explicitly a parameter in set ad user, you can using the instance parameter of set ad user. So IP phone is an example of a parameter that you can't set specifically using set AD user. So you, you'll notice as an example here, there's not an IP phone parameter. So what we can do is on line 46, we're going to ask for the extension. Line 47, we're going to get the user. Line 48, we're going to create and set that property on our temp user variable. And line 49, we're using the instance parameter to set that property in Active Directory. So I'll give it an extension, and then we can use the git ad user commandlet to validate that, that extension took. So there we go. Our user has an extension. Perfect. Another way of doing things is if you've got, for instance, a known set of department names, you can store that in your script, or you can import it from you know, a spreadsheet, a database, whatever you've got. Uh, and then you can prompt user to select from that list. So here on line 54, I've got our known departments. On line 56 to 63, I'm building a list with indexes. So we can see that this will actually take and list out all the departments with an index next to them. And so then the user can select an index from that list. So line 65 and 66, I'm prompting for an index and then setting that user's department based on the selection. So we'll put this user into information technology, selecting three, and we can validate that that happened using the get AD user commandlet. There we go, our users in IT, perfect. And we can also do some regular expression validation as well. So phone numbers, they should all be the same format. And so here on line 73, prompting for the phone number. And line 74, I'm using the match operator to make sure that it is in the format of three numbers, dash, three numbers, dash, four numbers. So if we run through this while loop, it's going to prompt us for a number. And since we put it in the right format, it actually took it. And of course, we can validate that using the get AD user commandment. Bam. There's our perfectly formatted phone number. And so then the manager as well, we can validate the manager by checking to make sure they're in Active Directory before we attempt to set the user with that manager. So line 87, asking for the manager's username. Line 89, checking to see if they're in Active Directory. And line 90, setting the user with that manager. And then of course, if the get it user operation fails in line 89, it'll drop down into the catch block and then boot them back and ask them to re-enter the manager's name. So we'll run through this. I'll first put in a manager that doesn't exist. Ah, it tells me it doesn't exist. So we'll put in one that does exist. There we go. We'll check and make sure that it had set that property by using the get AD user commandlet. And there we go. We got our manager assigned to this user. So we're doing all the sound validation. We can also validate the username. So we should not assume that just because it's a new user that that username doesn't already exist in Active Directory. So here's our username from before. We can validate that that username isn't already in use by using the get it user commandlet. So here line 109, I'm creating a while loop here. And line 111, I'm building the username by selecting the first letter of the first name and adding it to the last name. And then every loop through the while loop, it'll grab one additional letter from the first name until it comes up with a unique value. 
And so if we run this section, you'll notice that it, it found that the T user already existed, so it came up with TE user, since there isn't a TE user in my Active Directory. Another thing we can do is we can copy group memberships. So it's sometimes it's really tedious to select all the right groups. You can build a template file, or you can use a user as a template. So I've got another while loop. On line 128, I'm at and getting the name of the user to use as a template user. Line 131, I'm getting that user, and specifically the member of property. So that property contains all the groups that that user is a member of. And then line 133 for each of those groups, line 135, I'm adding our new user to that group. So we'll select a template user. So I'm going to use the same user I set as the manager. There we go. Added my user to the human resources group. And of course, we can validate that using the get ad user command line. Bam. And then an another thing to automate in your script is, of course, moving the user to the correct OU. So oftentimes, we like to organize our users by department. For example, so here I've got an example of sorting the users by the department that you specified. So here on line 147, I'm getting the user's department. On line 148 to 154, I've got a switch statement. So depending on what department you selected, it, it specifies the target OU to put them in. So line 155, I'm using the move AD object commandlet to move the user to that OU. And then we can use the get AD user commandlet to validate. And so you'll notice that we didn't need any user prompting to put it in the right OU. If you did want to let the user select it, you can build a list of OUs using the get child item command that looking at your AD drive. We can run this line right here and then look at that OUs and you'll notice that it came out with that same list of OUs. Those are the lists that's in our users OU. So I'm going to build another index list here and then prompt the user for the OU that they would like to move our new user into. So we've got five options there. And so this person was in the human resources group, so we'll move them to HR. And then we can use the get ad user command to validate that they made it. So there we go, looking at their distinguished name. Perfect. And then last but not least, the user's password is really important if you want them to be able to log in, right? So then, of course, we want to be able to set the user's password as well, especially if we want them to be able to log in, which is the point of having a user account. To create a password, I've got a character set here, line 176. And then I'm using on line 179, I'm using the get random commandlet to select 10 random characters from that set and joining them into one password. And then on lines 180 to 183, I'm attempting to set that password. And then if it fails, it just loops back through that while loop until it is able to set that password. And then of course, at the end, it outputs that password so that you can save it for your user. So there we go. It made this nice random password. Perfect. So then after we've got all those different sections we've gone through, let's run through and create us a new user from start to finish. So I'm going to select rest of this script here and run it. So I'm going to create a user with the same name, but this time it should come up with a different username since we added in that user validation. So there you go. So there we see it's using the TE user and we'll give them a cool title, specify an extension and then copy groups from, we'll just do the same one again. There we go, put them back in HR, and we'll set the same person as the manager. And we'll put this person in HR as well. Specify a mobile number. And there we go. So we've got our user with all those settings we specified. So that's an introduction to creating an Active Directory user provisioning script using PowerShell.